exactly good as 310. The problem that I have chosen is optimal partition of string. Here in this question, we are given a string S yes, and we need to partition this entire string into smaller substrings. Remember, substrings such that the characters in each substring are unique. There is no letter that appears in a single string more than once. That means the frequency of each and every letter that exists in my substring should be 1. What do we need to do? We need to return the minimum number of such substrings that can be partitioned from the input string S. So here they have provided us with an example. I'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm behind it by the presentation. Just remember one point that we need to partition this entire string into smaller substrings such that the frequency of each and every character in that substring happens to be one. So this is a takeaway. Without further ado, let's quickly move on to the PP example and let's understand the algorithm by this example. The question says that we need to keep track of all unique elements that could be part of one substring. So what we are going to do, we'll create a set and this will represent all the elements that are part of that substring and we'll using this set, we'll keep track of their frequency as one. So let's start ahead. The first element that we have is A. Is A part of this set? No, it's not part of the set. So we'll add it up. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is B. Is B part of this set? No, B is not part of the set. That means it's a happy case. So let's add B over here. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is A. At A, what do we see? We see that A is already part of this set. As a result of which, we'll have to create a partition over here. Hence, how will we be doing that? We will be creating the new partition. We'll be deleting all the elements or we, or we will be resetting the entire set. So new set gets created and we will add A to it. So the first partition got created at this particular index. Let's proceed ahead. Next element that we see is C. Is C part of this set? No, C is not part of this set. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is A. Is A part of this set? Yes, A is part of this set. Then what we should do? We should reset the entire hash set. That means a new partition should be created. Since a new partition is getting created, so let's create a new memory and let's add A over here. So A gets added over here. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is B. Is B part of this set? No, B is not part of this set. So we'll add B. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is A. Is A part of this set? Yes, A is part of this set. Then what we should do? We should do a reset of the entire hash set. So a new hash set gets created. That means we are partitioning it over here and we'll add A to it. And with this, we have successfully iterated over the entire array of characters and how many partitions in total got created or how many hash sets in total got created. One, two, three, and four. That means four partitions should be generated out of this entire string. And this is in sync with our expectation. Uh, to conclude it further, let's quickly walk through the coding section and see the code. So here I've created a count variable and this will actually store the answer. I created a new hash set to start with. So this will help us keep track of all the unique elements that are part of a substring. We start the iteration s.2 character array and we will move in a character wise fashion. We check if my current character in under consideration is part of the set or not. If it is part of the set, then what we should be doing? We should be creating a new partition. We increment our partition count variable and what do we do? We reset the entire hash set and we go ahead and add the new character under consideration as part of the set. In case my C character is not part of the existing set, what I should be doing? I should be simply adding it onto it. Once I'm out of this for loop, I should again check if my set is not empty. In that case, I should be incrementing the counter variable by one. Why by one? Because we have to consider and return the number of partitions possible. And with this, let's try and submit this up. At line number 25, we simply return the count variable accepted. The time complexity of this approach is order of n, where n signifies the number of characters that are there as part of the input string. And the space complexity is again order of n, where n signifies uh, the number of characters that are part of the input string. Because at max, this entire set can have these many characters into it. With this, let's wrap up today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates on Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.